good news is the Republicans actually have plans for the economy. The bad news is they copied them down as they were dictated by a guy on Fox. Our third story is Roger Ailes once sent George W. Bush a list of instructions for his presidency. Now his minions at his Little Watch business channel have given the chief house GOP guy on the economy his orders live on TV. Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz joins me in a moment. The self-proclaimed youngish gun of the GOP. Meanwhile, Congressman Paul Ryan of Wisconsin making an appearance on the Fox Business Network program America's Nightly Scoreboard. Scoreboard for them, ratings believed to be 21,000 viewers nationwide. Host David Asman serving as a yes man to Ryan's talking points after Ryan brushed off Minority Leader Boehner's assertion that Republicans are willing to compromise on tax cuts for the wealthy. Asman had a proposal for the congressman, a right-wing agenda called the Scoreboard Contract. Surprise similar to Newt Gingrich's 1994 contract on America. You got a very clear yeah. choice, yeah, one ideology or the other, we have limited government or more that's government. That's right. We have a choice of two futures in this country. Let's get on with making that choice. By the way, scoreboard has its own list, our own contract, if you will. The scoreboard mm -hmm. contract is no new taxes, no new bureaucrats, cut spending, repeal Obamacare. Would you be in favor of those? Absolutely. And we are, not only would I be in favor of these things, we will be in favor of those things. You tell them. Mass man. Meanwhile, Fox primetime viewers will be treated to some involuntary enlightenment this evening. Fox News finally agreed to run a Media Matters ad detailing the million-dollar donation parent company News Corp gave to the Republican Governors Association. The donation received one mention on the self-declared news network. The ad had to be tweaked multiple times before Fox deemed it suitable and is scheduled to air on the program opposite this news hour, most likely sandwiched between the ad for Goldline and the other ad for Goldline. Joining me now is Promise, the vice chair of the Democratic National Committee, representing the Florida 20th, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Congresswoman, thanks again for your time tonight. Thank you, Keith. The last point first. If I'm a Fox viewer, my, my reaction to the Media Matters ad would be, so what's wrong with giving money to, to oppose Democratic candidates? Does the ad change anything? Well, I, I guess uh, what it changes, or, or I don't know if the ad changes anything, but what, what seems to have changed is at least Fox now seems to be being transparent about being an arm of the Republican Party. I, I mean, as someone who is an occasional guest on that network, um, I have often uh, struggled to find the neutrality in the interviewer's questions, and at least now they're letting it all hang out there. Yeah, they're fair and balanced. They have conservatives <laughs> and Republicans. Um, <laughs> and Tea Party you know, candidates. One of your your House colleagues, Mr. Ryan, w w essentially was signing policy pledges put forward by a supposed news organization. Is this new, or have Republicans actively been taking policy from Fox and Congressman Ryan just happened to do it in front of TV cameras? Well, all, all kidding aside, it's actually really disturbing. Mm -hmm. um, any news network, even one with a particular slant, should at least represent themselves as being neutral. And any uh, politician, any candidate, any Anyone being interviewed on a network should feel like they have a fair shake, um, Republicans and Democrats. And uh, on Fox, when th that, that host made it clear that they have an agenda, that they're trying to get uh, members of Congress to sign on to publicly on the air, uh, they're making contributions to Republican organizations, it's just it's unbelievably outrageous that they continue to represent themselves as a neutral you know, television network, uh, news organization, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, but at the same time, they're transparently advocating uh, the, for support of and, and success of Republican candidates for office. Let me revert to the lead story tonight. You may have uh, heard of uh, Congressman Van Hollen before talking about whether or not to force the Republicans to vote against the middle class tax cuts uh, while trying to preserve their tax cuts for the rich. His answer to us was he expects there will be a vote in Congress. He's not sure if we'll go to the House first or the Senate would take the lead on this. Uh, I guess the question is, is a two-parter, which is A, why on earth would Democrats not want to see that vote happen, and B, are you going to call the, the middle class tax cuts Obama tax cuts to differentiate them? <laughs> well, we do want to see them uh, see, see them happen, and we want to see them happen sooner rather than later. We, we want to make sure that uh, uh, of any of the Bush tax cuts that are made permanent, the ones that focus on the middle class and working families are, are, are the ones that we want to make sure are reenacted. The ones that uh, focus on the wealthiest 2 percent of Americans that would add $700 billion to the deficit should be allowed to expire because they don't do anything to turn the economy around. Most wealthy, wealthy Americans simply invest in the stock stock market, sit on their money, mm -hmm. and working families put that money back out into the economy. DNC Vice Chair, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, as always, thanks for your time. Thank you, Keith.